Welcome to the map Forts of Brunin 2 in BFME 1 on the patch 2.22 once again for a good against evil matchup between Rohan and Isengard. We see the Uruks marching. And the Rohan player is recruiting Mary and also capturing this settlement and this settlement and hugging the bottom side so the Isengard player won't be able to see the peasants. It's the vision of Isengard. And he can't find any peasants to kill. We get to see more and more Uruks coming from the Uruk pit. And he has no vision around this area either. It looks like Rowan is planning to creep this with Mary. And the peasant will also sport the Hobbit to get this creep done as soon as possible. The peasants will hit level 2 after that one. And that's going to be a great power spike for the Rohan player. But in exchange, he will lose this farm, which is pretty unfortunate. It will hurt your eco quite a bit. Because the outer settlements always start level 2. When there are farms or slaughterhouses, it means they give you more money compared to the structures inside your castle. Boom. Okay, this peasant will be able to reach this area. The Uruks are coming just in time though. And I think they should be able to protect this lumber mill. Because the peasants will need some time to destroy it. And you can repair it too with these workers. They are dealing good damage. But I think the Uruks will deal with this before they can finish it off. Okay, the Hobbit is coming. Level 2 Hobbit and the level 2 Peasant. But remember, the Warchan is still available for Isengard. That means you can use it. Turn this into a 2v1 situation or a 1v1 situation. But it looks like you want to go for a Creeping instead. You will be Creeping this lamb and this lamb at pretty much the same time. Rohan is going for a stable rush. So no extra Peasants will be recruited. It's in total 3 farms inside and 2 farms outside. That means he has 5 farms for 20% discount. This lumber mill will be destroyed. The peasants are almost level 3. And without the Warchan, it's going to be difficult for you to clean this up. One more Uruk required for the Uruk pit to hit level 2. Isengard Eco is going to be very good. Because he's going to grab this treasure and this one too. So he has around about 600. He has now 2 furnaces, 3 furnaces inside the castle. And after this Uruk, the Uruk pit will be reaching level 2. These peasants will be getting killed, obviously. And where is the Hobbit at? That's a very good question. Uh, the Hobbit was cloaking around this location. It means the Isengard player will not be able to recapture this one anytime soon. In the meantime, the Rohirrim are taking care of the Uruks. No problemo in the melee fight. He will hit level 2 very soon. And also that means power points are going crazy for the Rohan player. And he's going to get one power point in total. Two power points missing. Never mind, he's going to go for the heal. Not going for the Elven summon. The second Rohirrim is going to be approached. He's going to approach the battlefield. Good looking castle for Rohan. He needs one more Rohirrim for the map control. Because you need like in total three at bare minimum. So two of them can perma uh, pressure your opponent. And one of them can always creep the whole map. It's very important. So Rohan player will not be able to finish us off. Because the pikemen are arriving just in time. Uruk pit, furnace, with industry. That's going to boost the eco from Aizen quite a bit. And more furnaces are coming up into the castle as well. This creep uncontested will help the Rohirrim to reach level 2. And he's creeping this one as well for another Rohirrim to hit level 2. So the map is looking like 50-50. But remember, at the beginning of the game, Rowan can counter this pikeman quite easily with the peasants. So in order to counter this, you need either to recruit a Berserker or you can go for the Warp Pit Rush. And I think it's going to be a Warp Pit Rush because he's a very good, he has very good looking eco, right? can also go for the Lords if he wants to, but towering up just to feel a bit more safe, that's good. The peasants can't catch up to this pikeman and they will get slaughtered by the Berserker. Oh my god, if they hit you though, it hits hard, but one shot, one shot, one shot. What can men do against such reckless heat? And more and more peasants coming. Map control is not looking too bad for Rohan. And this is dangerous because I believe by the time you destroy this or you try to destroy this, the peasant should make it out of this farm and take down your pikemen, no problemo. But he needs to recruit them now. If he waits a little bit longer, he won't make it out. I think it's too late already now. Okay, but this creep is going to be taken by Rohan. Beautiful trample with the Rohirrim. And after the creeping session at the beginning of the game and we have like no more creeps left, the Hobbit is still blocking the settlement, by the way. Mary, super valuable hero, as you can see and tell. 
We have industry palantir and warchant. Palantir can be used to reveal this hobbit, so you can kill him and then regrab your settlement. And Rohan has two power points, but because he went for the heal, he has not the power points for the for the elven summon. That was a mistake, in my opinion. If you didn't go for the heal, you would get the summon now, and this rush would be just way more efficient. You could just summon them right now and kill the pikemen and destroy the Uruk pit, kill the pikemen too. But without this, it's gonna be difficult. There comes the Warchan on the Warp Riders, and Rohirrim have to disengage already. Oh my god, he killed horses. <gasps> he killed horses with the technology, putting them in between the gate, and they are not even visible on the minimap. Or when you go here, you don't even see them really properly. And I think the Rohan player was just sending the Rohirrim back to the castle, and they were riding through the pikemen at the gate. You need, you need uh, peasants to clean this up, you know. Oh my god, that's so bad, actually. <laughs> One Rohirrim minus with heavy armor and forge bleeds. That's a big investment. And super duper to recover from at the beginning of the game. The combination of pikemen and berserker will make it also quite difficult for Rohan to just clean them with the, with the peasants. And in the mid game, as you can see and tell, Aizen is looking super strong. Because the early game was also going very well, he didn't lose any settlement because Rohan was not really trying to do any economical damage. He even lost a farm in exchange. So the early game was very good for Aizen. Much better than it was for Rohan. This Lumber Mill is going to be destroyed from Aizen. The beast is looking super nice. He's also Sharku up on the field now. Sharku, Sharku the war hero. Very fast hero as you can see and tell. He's running it down, zooming around the map. And also countering the horses, being quite tanky against them. My works are hungry. Get in there, boy. Okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> I mean, look at the minimap, dude. That's the problem, right? Like you are a prison. Yes, Rohirrim archers now. They are shooting Sharku. Sharku is very vulnerable against archer damage. We've also lords up on the field. The fighting Uruk has approached. Now, you might go for the demolishing of the warp pit and go for the armory. That's a possibility Isengard can do. But let's see what he's going to choose. Lourdes is going to need ages to destroy this farm, actually. Now, Lourdes is not very good without carnage to destroy farms. He will do it, but it will just take a long time. He's going for the archer range level 2 for the fire arrows, but no heroes up on the field. Um, you know, in order to be very strong with the Rohirrim archers and kill this pikeman quickly, you need like Kyurin leadership or Eoma leadership. Ideally, even both. Because with the Warchant, look how tanky they are in the Porcupine formation. It will take you ages. And you want to move a little bit because you can see only two of them are shooting. The other three are not shooting. You need, you need to move a little bit closer so they can all shoot. Heavy armor. A hole is not that strong. The heavy armor is going to still melt them. Charku is level 2 though. He is now the leadership. The chief of the war riders will only grant fear resistance. Oh my god, he's getting melted. Will he die? Oh yeah, he's dead. He's dead. Now Lurz is exposed. Actually, you can just kill that Lurz now. I think we can kill Lurz. Yeah, he's level 1. The pikemen are rotating. Trying to... Oh, be careful there. Nice micro with the Lourdes, the pikes, but they are about to be dead from the Alvin Archer army. It looks like Lourdes might be able to get away from this situation. In the worst case scenario, he can capture the outpost and put him in. But even if he dies, it's only level 1. Look at the minimap though. Rohan has literally zero settlements on the field. He's just like tunnel vision focused on killing the Lourdes, which will not gain him any momentum. Nor power points, because heroes level 1 don't give too many power points. Rohirrim archers are doing a good job. That's why, you see, that's why Elma is so good. Elma will give you the outlaw leadership. Elma is one of these heroes that will always... Sharku is back in the action. They will always give you the money back you invested to recruit them. The outlaw leadership will be unlocked with level 3. And remember, your spear throw can always one-shot the works too, right? That's pretty good. Sharku is literally charging in. But Rohan is poor. That's the problem Rohan has. Without map control, Rohan has only four farms inside the castle. That's not enough, you know, to do all the stuff he wants. He needs to make Rohirrim arches. He needs to recruit heroes, level them up a little bit, and recover from the map. 
With this map control, Aizen can do whatever he wants to do. He can go for Saruman, make army, go for the outpost, siege, and all of that pretty much simultaneously, you know. That's why he has such a big eco boost right now with the industry being on top of that. Super helpful on the level 3 furnace. You get almost 100 resources. That's crazy amount of resources. Lords can be used to kill this Yomon Arches on top of the wall to get some more levels. Charco is level 3. But Vorks will fall off now. Vorks can't really compete with this at all. And he might even lose the Vork Riders now. Leave one wolf alive and the sheep are never safe. Oh, he died actually. Okay, never mind. He didn't leave the... But he has now already combos, you see? He has already combos. With pikemen, crossbowmen combination, it means charging in the, into them is not really a, <laughs> you know, a solid option. That's the problem. You need to demolish this as soon as possible. You need farms inside there, you know? Every farm you, you can take, you need to make. Aizen going for the outpost at the top side from, with Sharku. Now he has the chance to go for the um, siege works. Ron has all the army gathered in one place. The army is not weak by all means, but he is missing the leadership part. He is missing at least Theorin, you know, who is a hero that gives you leadership right off the bat. 40% damage and 50% armor will make your army overall way stronger. It's basically like a war chant. You can always keep him behind the army to keep him in a safe spot. So outpost captured. Once again, he is waiting, I believe, for Saruman. And then with Saruman, this combos with Lourdes. He is pretty much strong enough to just commit. He has also almost 5 power points in the bank. But I think the outpost here will be now destroyed. Rohan is getting some power points at least. Uh, they can turn in Sharku. Look this damage. Sharku is getting bullied a little bit. And that's what Rohan is good for. That's what Cavalry is good for. Because you can always avoid to take fights you, you can't win. You can't fight against this army. So you can just ignore them pretty much. And go around the map and farm power points. But he's trying to kind of beat him in there a little bit there. And you need to hack the wall. Because if they shoot you down, that will hurt. Oof, what a damage. Oh, beautiful micro from the Rohan player. But the Vorchan just coming in the last possible second. And the Rohirrim warrior will be taken down. If he would have the shields, he wouldn't get killed there. But he didn't have the shields to begin with. Now, the siege will still take time. Lord's getting level 3. That's becoming more dangerous. Uh, he might go for the siege works. He's gonna go for the siege works inside the castle. Doesn't even bother building at the outpost. So you need to just, you know, kind of babysit this ballista all the way there. Ooh, bad pathing. Oh my god. Okay, Theodin is on the field. Oh my god. <laughs> like, scouting is very important. If you can find this ballista and destroy it over and over again, it might give you the power point advantage you need and also the time you need, actually, to kind of. Uh, stole the game out a little bit, you know, and get stronger eventually, right? When you get Aragorn, like, Rohan in the super late game is super, super strong. Like, that's what you need to achieve. Get to the late game power spike of Rohan with plenty of Rohirrim, Rohirrim archer combinations. And then you have it bare minimum, Theoden and Aragorn leadership. Both of these heroes give you leadership right from the second they enter the battlefield. And without their leadership, your DPS is not going to be the greatest and you will get bullied. Remember, the Rohirrim archers are very weak against fire arrows. That means if they get shot by these combos, they will die in a second. Watch this. Boom, 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 boom. You see the damage? Kind of crazy, isn't it? Oh, don't feed. He's trying to kill Sharku. Sharku is going to be dead, yeah. But, oh my god, don't fight this. He lost a battalion, though. I want you to understand that you need to invest 700 for the Rohirrim archer. 400 for the fire arrows, you know, and heavy armor and banner. It's almost 2,000 you need to invest into this. Now he's war chanted his army. Now you need to deal. Uh, the ballista has been destroyed though. That's pretty good. The lumber mills haven't been touched now for a long duration. Rohan is reclaiming some of the map control. And whenever you can force your opponent to use the war chant in a spot like this, it's pretty good. But one ballista was able to make it through. So he's sieging this part of the wall. It, it looks like it's broken already, you know. And when when he has the time to go inside the jeans, it's basically over because he has freezing rain too. So I think it's better and safe to see that you need to wait for the for the Saruman. Because of the money he has, the incredible map control he was able to maintain for a very long duration. 
he's able to get Saruman just in the perfect possible time. Vorten is on cooldown, but it's gonna be there very, very soon. And Lourdes is almost level 4. Remember, when Saruman is nearby, Lourdes also will level up faster because of his combat experience leadership, which will help your army to level up faster. Lourdes sharing combat experience with them will also mean that he will hit level 5 way quicker when there is his master nearby, you know? Leveling up this army with his speech craft ability. This army is not looking too weak, but trust me, quality beats quantity and it's all about leadership. So he has, he has a bare minimum as we are talking, 90% armor, 40 from Saruman's leadership, 50 from Warchant and 50% damage. And this army will have zero leadership. Aizen is going in. Aizen is going in and Rohan is not answering. Where was Rohan when Rohan fell? Now he's coming in, boys. He's repairing the part of the wall. But there is the, this Ballista is still outside. The Citadel, the whole of the kings will be destroyed first. There comes the Rain Fireball. Like I said, level 4 and all. The leadership is completely gone. Can Rohan answer this? that all level 5 to oh my god the damage is something else ladies and gentlemen <laughs> look at the glow man you see them glowing shining bright like a diamond who now has the strength to face against the forces of Saruman and Lutz in the union of the master and servant the answer is nobody that's how you play Isengard in the mid game, you know? Rohan didn't use the, utilize the whole power of his faction at the beginning of the game. And when you don't do this, when you don't hurt your evil opponent in the beginning of the game, it's going to be quite difficult. Now we have 3.8k. Very soon he will be able to buy this castle. So he will have two castles and one outpost against only one outpost remaining. This outpost doesn't provide you pretty much no resources, only 10 coming from the Citadel. That's not going to be enough. Rohan is kind of pro broke. There's also no Eoma leadership. Keep that in mind. Outlaw would come in handy. But even without the freezing rain, it's going to be difficult because it's triple leadership. Saruman, Lurz, and Vorchand against double leadership only from Theodin King and the statue. So, long story short, but the army is badly damaged. So, I don't know. There's also the end summon. Maybe this game can be stalled out a little bit. If that, if there is a comeback from this game, I would be surprised. Fireball, but he got crippled. There comes the end special summon. Holy guacamole. Oh, the steel. The ends are going to war. Ladies and gentlemen, he was able to steal, but Saruman has been killed. The ends are defending. Theoden is freed from the spell, but he's gonna ride through the pikeman. Theoden King stands alone. The ends just need to keep trampling, 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 trampling. The ballista is coming in clutch. The ends can't solo carry the Rohan faction into a quick victory. The end is burning. And everything is falling apart. Theodin getting crippled there was like the worst possible scenario that could have happened. You know, it's like Murphy's Law. Whatever can go wrong, went wrong in this specific game. <laughs> and the Ballista is coming. Isengard fully unleashing. Sharku is diving in a little bit. The army at the well recovering, yes. But the Rohirrim Arches are no more. And the game will be over. The total dominance of Isengard. Smashing the Rohan faction on the map, Forts of Wound and 2, you know, one on one in the BFME 1 online battle arena. GG well played, guys. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, you know what to do. See you next time. Until then, take care of yourself. Keep hitting like a truck, and as always, stay beyond standards. Peace out, boys.